Hello again, you're watching Everard Junction and uh, this is part three of the uh, Building a Model Railway series. So what I've done so far is I've got all of the cork glued down, nice and flat and ready uh, to take the scenery and the track. Uh, I'm going to be putting an extra layer of cork under the track um, just to raise it up a little bit, give it that sort of raised uh, profile and it should also give me some space for my uncoupling magnets um, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the track connected up and as near as damn it in its final position to check I'm happy with the plan and that uh, it's going to fill the space nicely and then after that I can uh, mark out where I'm going to put my dropper wires and where the point motors are going to have to go so I'm going to be using a uh, Dremel with a cutting disc on the end to cut the uh, flexi trank uh, to the right length. I've got a scalpel for cutting the sleepers off at the ends so I can put the rail joiners on. I've got plenty of rail joiners and I've also got the insulating rail joiners which will be needed for the frogs on the uh, points. Uh, I'll be using electro frog points for the whole of the yard and you can see that they're all metal in the frog and if we flip it over you can see that there's a wire coming off the bottom of that frog and that wire runs to your uh, polarity switch in the point motor so the point is always powered from the point motor and if it's connected to the track on these two rails here directly um, you'll get a short circuit so you have to insulate the connection there the join to the adjacent rail and uh, power the point independently uh, the benefit of doing all that is uh, the point is more reliable in its operation and it also looks more realistic with everything on the top side being metal where it should be. We'll cover that in more detail later uh, but for now I'm going to focus on getting everything cut to length and in the right place. Okay, I'm making some good progress. Got uh, the six uh, storage sidings in, in uh, roughly the right spacing. Uh, the head shunt is in, and the point work is all connected and is mostly in the right place. And uh, just needs a little bit of uh, jiggling about. And uh, I need to get the uh, curved point in over there. I haven't put that in because I wanted to uh, get everything in here in the right spot and then uh, the sort of angle of that curve would dictate where that point needed to start off. So uh, now I know where to put it. I can uh, put it in 
and then get everything properly hooked up to the rest of the layout. I've been having to think about um, some of the parts of the yard and some of the things I want to do, some of the things I want to improve and I've also been going over the uh, the comments and the suggestions that you guys have been uh, putting in the uh, previous videos which has been extremely helpful and you know, sort of broadened my mind a little bit with regards to uh, possibilities and things that I can do so uh, I've uh, decided to implement a couple of things and uh, there's a couple of other changes that um, I'm making to the actual layout itself um, further out um, which I'd plan to do anyway now that uh, this yard is uh, coming into uh, coming into things I've planned um, planned out some point work at the ends of the uh, the carriage sidings um, to allow the shunter that brings those carriages in um, the opportunity to leave so uh, it'll be able to uh, leave the yard collect more coaches or go elsewhere within the yard um, a lot of times in uh, mainline stations, you know, dead end stations, um, the shunter would come in, it would bring the coaches all the way to the end and it would just sit there trapped by its own rake of carriages. That's fine in a station environment because the carriages only sat there for 15-20 minutes, they were then collected by a mainline locomotive, people got on them and the train left. The shunter was then free to leave the station and collect some more carriages for another train. However in here these carriages are going to be stored you know it's more of a long-term thing they're either coming in for maintenance or they're coming in for storage because uh, they're not needed uh, so you're going to want to get the shunter out so uh, plan some point work which will allow me to do that so the idea being this uh, we'll use this rake of six mark twos as an example the uh, 08 will bring them in it'll uncouple them at this point through the point work and it'll either go to the centre or go to the outer depending on what it needs to do to get past the rake of carriages so in this situation it would be uh, transferring onto this one coming out, back on the front then push them home back to the buffers and it'll uncouple, it's then free to leave can collect more coaches and bring those in as well uh, done the same thing on the uh, maintenance sidings as well so it should uh, just add a little bit more functionality to the yard and make things even more fun to operate. I'm also doing some uh, track work alterations um, to the uh, the main lines, which I had uh, planned to do for quite some time, uh, even without the presence of the carriage sidings. Um, but uh, now I'm, I'm choosing to do them, and it's also allowing me to uh, tailor the point work a little better um, so everything works and flows really nicely. First thing is I have removed the crossover that linked the outer track to the centre track. Um, it's no longer required, um, its uh, functionality is being moved elsewhere on the layout and um, it uh, is also going to free up the corners nicely. Something that bugged me um, was the presence of these bits of points because they spoiled what was otherwise a very smooth um, banked curve. Um, I think things will look a lot better with just two continuous pieces of line there. Um, and I don't actually need the outer to transfer to the centre in this area. It needs to happen in, another, in a, uh, another location, which I have planned for. What I'm going to do with those two points is I'm going to relocate them here, and what they'll do is they'll transfer the branch line um, to the, uh, the centre track, or the, uh, the first of the main line tracks. Now, the purpose of that is to ensure that the carriage sidings has as much functionality as possible. So the 08, or whatever shunter I'm using, will bring out the coaches onto the branch line. I'll follow the branch line, let's say it just stays on the branch line for now, continue on. That branch line gives me access to platform 1, platform 2, and also that centre through track for running round purposes. If it then comes out of the sidings again, perhaps with a different rake of coaches, it can transfer to the centre track here goes down the centre track and there's a point there that then gives the shunter access to both platform 3 and platform 4 so that allows all platforms in the station to be accessible um, with passenger trains or passenger coaches from the uh, carriage sidings and the same way around it also allows the transfer of coaches from those platforms from arriving trains and they can be transferred either across here or on the branch line and they could be sent back into the carriage sidings. 
I don't need access to the uh, outer track where the 37 is, don't need to go there because there's no platform so it's pointless sending a uh, rake of coaches out there because there's nowhere to put them and there's no platform. So the only issue I have is getting passenger trains that are running on the outside track into the carriage sidings when their rakes uh, need to be disconnected or changed. That's where these two uh, right hand express points come in. They will uh, allow the outer to transfer to the centre track which gives access to platform 3 and platform 4. Trains running on the centre track will ordinarily come into platform 4 and they can then be uh, disconnected if it needs to be um, and shunted uh, back the way they came into the uh, carriage sidings. Trains on the outer track that need to stop at the station transfer across. There's another point underneath that gives access to both those platforms so they can come under here where these Mark IIs are. They can stop somewhere around here and they can then be transferred off and instead of going back onto the outer track they go off and into the carriage sidings. And then if uh, I've got a rake here that I want to uh, take out onto the outer track, I have a point here that allows me to do that and I can run back onto the outer track. So it allows the outer track, the centre track and the branch line to access all the platforms they're going to need to access and it uh, allows the yard to fulfil its job properly. Thinking all that through and planning all of that out does take a bit of time and a bit of careful thought um, so do make sure you take your time with it. Um, ultimately when it's all done you'll thank yourself that you've got the points in the right places and you haven't got any unnecessary um, track work. It's all being used for you know, its proper purpose and allows you to, to use everything. Um, something I wish I'd done previously, uh, you know, a good example of that was that transfer line over there. Never actually used it because it was just in the wrong place. It should have been over there so that I could get to the station and not just randomly transfer to the centre track for no real reason. So uh, it does really make sense to get the planning done right to begin with. OK, so now I'm happy with the amendments that I've made to the track plan. I'm going to uh, get on with uh, making some more progress on actually getting it finished. Um, the next thing that I need to do is I need to get a curved point in here so that we can transfer from the branch line into the yard itself which will then allow me to really finalise the position of everything within the yard and I also need to remove this point here as it is no longer required. Now this is going to require that I make alterations to already scenic and ballasted track. Some of you have probably not ever done this before um, and it might seem a little bit daunting especially if you're not ripping it up you're actually still using these lines. Um, it really isn't too bad actually as long as you're careful um, it's surprising how little damage you actually inflict by making track, rot, track work uh, alterations like this. Um, I'll be doing a proper video on the process for doing this um, but for now I'll just leave the camera running and you can just watch me uh, rip this out and put the point in and also remove that one that we don't need anymore.
And there you go. Minimal damage. And we can now put a bit of cork down and put the, uh, the new point in. That's one of the main reasons why I use cork under the track. Uh, I like to give it a little bit of a shoulder, just raise it up ever so slightly. Um, but uh, it's also extremely useful when it comes to making changes like this. Uh, as long as you can get a screwdriver under the cork, you can almost peel it off. Works very well. Okay, I've uh, got some cork, just laid it in there for the moment. Uh, got a little shoulder on the edge of it, just to uh, keep the, uh, the gradients on the curve. Um, all the, uh, the curves are ever so slightly banked um, to uh, give them that extra level of realism. So I just make sure I uh, put that back in on uh, the branch line. And then uh, I'll uh, give it probably one or two track pins, just to tack it in place, hold it. And then once it's ballasted and glued, I can pull those out. Okay, now there was originally a curved point just here, and then there was that short section of track that I've pulled up. Now, what I've done is I have replaced it with a curved point. It just faces the other way. Um, so I'll put that point up here. So in theory, the piece of track that I cut out should be exactly the right length uh, to just pop back in. And indeed it is. So now I can mark the uh, hole for the point motor and uh, remove everything temporarily, drill the hole and then put it all back in for real and the motor can be fitted later on. Okay, so I drilled a little hole, it's about uh, 10 millimeters across. I'll just pop the uh, cork back into place. Bring the track in. Try to make sure that the uh, the gaps where the fish plates are are even. It's very easy to do sort of something like that with track. You end up with a gap at the top and it's snug at the bottom. That will give you a kink. It's very noticeable when trying to round that curve. So try and keep everything nice and straight and true. And if you're struggling to get round a corner, then uh, consider using a tighter radius rather than just try and pull it round because you'll end up kinking it all. Okay, I'm just holding the uh, point motor underneath uh, the point and uh, just, just checking that the hole is uh, big enough for it to work. As you can see as I flick the switch or flick the, uh, the motor, it works. Okay, so now we've come to uh, connect the track, um, but as you can see it's the perfect size, so the fish plates stick out the end. So uh, what you need to do, a little trick, is to uh, push the fish plates all the way onto the rail, all the way down, like that. Then get it in position. Doesn't have to be exactly in the right place. And then just with a pair of pliers, just tease out those fish plates and uh, slot them in to the other rail. And there you go. Okay, the entrance is done. It will need um, some cosmetic sleepers just to fill the gaps, but uh, that'll be done when I get round to uh, ballasting it. Uh, the geometry is all good, there's no kinks in it, so uh, now ready to actually commit to laying the track for real in the yard.
Okay, so the uh, the track is now laid in its intended position. There's still a little bit more to do. I need to get some points sorted out so I can uh, reverse the shunters at that end. Um, but that's not going to stop me from making uh, progress on the rest of it. Uh, so whilst those are on order, there's plenty to be getting on with. Quite happy with how everything looks. Uh, shortened up a couple of sidings, including that one there. Uh, these two are a nice length for a free car DMU. I might have to put a little bit on the ends of them, but that would just uh, be to facilitate the uh, position of a buffer stop. Um, it is quite uh, tight, but they do, they will fit. Um, it's just if I put a buffer stop on the end just there, I'm going to be uh, reduced um, in the space there. So might just have to put an extra bit just there. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, happy with the length of that one there. That's nice. Um, the free sidings at the back are a great length. Uh, these ones in the middle um, will certainly be useful as well. The uh, top one will still fit a, a six coach train. That one in the middle will fit a five coach train. And uh, the nearest one uh, will fit a four coach train. Now, the middle one is still up for debate. I may get rid of it just to uh, improve the look of things. I'm quite happy with the amount of track. I don't think it's it's overdone. I think it looks okay. Um, and it looks you know like a set of carriage sidings that you would get um, a few miles up the line from a station. Uh, but uh, that siding may be removed, a short one there, just so I can get uh, a little bit more scenery in. But we'll see how it goes. What I might actually do is just shorten it right up and use it as somewhere to keep shunters. We shall see. I've uh, got the uh, head shunt in here as well, obviously. Again, it fits a free car DMU, so they can reverse you know, back on there. Um, may put um, coach washing facilities here, um, over there, perhaps fueling. Uh, a facility for unloading fuel, and then here, these two would be where diesels and DMUs could fill up. Um, this will be carriage cleaning and maintenance, and this will purely be storage, and it may actually be enclosed in a shed. Um, not sure exactly what I'm going to do with that yet, um, but again, that's uh, that's quite far into the future. There's a lot more to be getting on with um, in the short term. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, quite a lengthy video, I know, but uh, I hope it gave you some pointers and uh, some hints and tips. Uh, so I will be back in uh, part four where we seriously start looking at the electrics and wiring everything up including the freeway point that I get asked so frequently about. So uh, that'll be upcoming in probably a week or so. Um, we'll get it all wired up, we'll get it tested, we'll start putting in the point motors and if I have time um, I'm going to start looking at um, the scheme I've got for uncoupling um, the uh, rakes of coaches when they come into the sidings. In the meantime, I'm going to uh, just make sure I'm happy with the position of everything and perhaps get a couple more track pins in there just to stop it moving around. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll be back with another video in hopefully a week's time.